said after the last game of 2019, you were going to the offseason with the mentality you were the starter. Obviously, Peyton ended up being the starter, but how did that mentality carry over? Is that helped like, through that whole time into this year where you have another chance to become the starter? Sure, yeah. Um, yeah, I attacked the offseason as I was a starter. Things happened the way they happened. I love Peyton. We were super thankful for him coming in and leading this team to a Big Ten West championship to the last three years. Um, but it didn't change the way I prepared. You know, I, I was the next guy in. Um, I was helping Peyton during practice. He was helping me. We were growing. and um, It's the same mentality, same, uh, same attack, same approach to the offseason this year. Um, but this year it's different because it's my last one, you know. So it's, uh, it's a different urgency, I would say, um, because there's only a certain amount of time left. And, you know, I'm trusting in the process and um, trusting that everything I've led up to this point is, is going to culminate September 3rd, and uh, I'm ready to do that. Andrew, how do you feel your skill set separates you from the other guys? Hey, Dave. Good to see you. Nice to see you, Andrew. Good. Um, I think I think my skill set is will speak for itself. I I have the ability to push the ball downfield, and I can run through people, and I can make a play with my feet when I need to. It's um, it's always been who I am. It's going to continue to be that way. Um, I think what separates myself from some of the other guys is my ability to uh, bring guys along with me. I think being a fifth year, being a guy who people trust, um, that's a responsibility that I carry, and um, I think people trust me. I think that's. It's kind of a, it's a unity thing, and um, you'll see it when I play on the field. I'm going to give everything I got. I'm going to make a block for a running back if he's coming outside. So I'm going to play the Wildcat way as long as I can for as hard as I can, and uh, I think that's what that's what my edge is. Thanks. Yeah. What's the the quarterback room been like? You know, embracing Ryan and having Hunter here, knowing you guys are all competing for that job. Is it? balance of you know working together and also trying to you know you know yeah. the job too. yeah I mean you can imagine it's we're all competitive people and naturally we um, we're going to compete with each other we're, we're trying to one up each other every day in practice but I mean it does ourselves no good um, not communicating with each other not helping each other Sam Jarek presented to the team the other night and he said if you're not challenging the next person to be as best as they can be I mean, you're doing yourself an injustice because ultimately we're we're, press, we're pushing our, our each other. Excuse me, um, because whoever's going to be the starting job is going to have to be good. And we, I mean, expectation is to be Big Ten West champs to win our bowl game. Um, so it's been a great room. We got a lot of fun guys. Uh, it's been it's been great welcoming Ryan into this year and um, the three of us and everyone else too. The young guys are fun dudes, man. Cole. Um, and Jasper, two freshmen coming in, Brendan Sullivan too. You guys will get to know their names eventually, but um, it's been a great, good off season with those guys. Um, have there been any specific things you've been focusing on this off season that have been different than other off seasons? Um, consistency. That's where I've that's where I've lacked within practice at least is being consistent, and um, you know that comes down to um, getting through my progression quicker. And ultimately, that's just film study and, and um, pre preparing with the receivers in the room. So um, getting through progressions quicker, being quicker with my feet, just the little things that um, come with the position. But uh, I felt great through the first four days of camp, and I'm, uh, I'm excited for the future. Yeah, and you've got the advantage of being able to learn from guys like Clayton and Peyton. What kind of things have you learned from them, and how have you seen them kind of impact your game a little bit? Man, uh, you're making me think back far to Clayton, but um, <laughs> Clayton was a pro's pro. Clayton did, was a professional from every, from the moment I stepped in. Guys respected him, and uh, he he expected the best out of everybody around him, and he made others better, and that's what I try to do. Um, Peyton was incredibly decisive, and he was really good at getting the ball out of his hand, finding a check down when he needed to, and that's something that I've picked up. Uh, through this offseason is not forcing certain throws and um, knowing where my check down or my outlet is. And uh, so that's what I would say from those two. Awesome. Thank you, Andrew. Thank yeah, you. Cool. thanks, Thank guys. You. Thank you. Can you compare where you are today with what you, where you were a couple of years ago when you came into the program? Um, I think today versus when I, was, when I first got here, um, I think I've matured a lot, um, gone through a lot, uh, and, and learned, you know, learned a lot from, from 
personal experiences, football experiences, and um, yeah, I think I'm mentally a lot stronger than I was, you know, as a as a sophomore coming in here. What's allowed for that mental stability and growth? How have you, you, know, um, you uh, kind of focused on to keep the, your head, you know, yeah. in, in the game, so to speak, when yeah. uh, it hasn't always gone your way here so far? Um, I mean, I've I've faced some adversity on the on the field, off the field, um, and you know, gone through some 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 tough times, uh, and and you know that's that's the best way to to, to, to learn is, is to go through those tough times and and come out on the better on, on the other side better better because of it. And uh, yeah, I think I've just just had some experiences that have that have helped me grow a little bit. Are there people or things that you lean on in those tougher times? Yeah, I mean, obviously my family. Uh, my family's been been always been a, a huge part of my life. Uh, they support me in everything I do, um, and just want the best for me. And that's you know, all you can ask from from great parents and um, coaches too. Um, you know, Coach Fitz, Coach Jake, um, Coach McCall when I was first here um, have all been um, great resources for me and, and guys that I can go to. And um, yeah, just ask for help, and, and they're always always willing to, to help out. Hey Hunter, kind of a, a different receiving core this year yep. than you've had. I mean, you got some guys who are going down. <clears throat> Anything stand out about this group? Uh, we're really talented. I think we're really talented across the board. Um, we've got some young guys and we've got some new guys. Um, and I think you know, once we you know put it all together and, and get that chemistry down, um, I think we're going to have some guys on the edge that are going to be able to make some plays and. Um, I'm, I'm excited. I'm really excited. Andrew was telling us every day in practice, the quarterbacks are trying to one up each other. You know, it's obviously a competition. You guys are, are friendly too. But yeah. How how are practices knowing that you know every rep matters and every practice you know, you're showing the possibility to the coaches that you can be the guy day one that yeah. takes a snap under center against Michigan State. Yeah, I mean it's it's the same thing that we've you know been doing for the past four years. It's now my fifth year, which is hard to believe. Um, and. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's the same thing. You're going out, um, executing the offense, uh, taking care of the football, uh, and just going out and, and doing your job. That's ultimately what, what, we're, what we're out there to do. And um, yeah, that's kind of how we're approaching it, I guess. Hunter, uh, I think you've had like seven offensive coordinators on since you started high school. How does uh, year two of Coach Jake, how big of a difference does that make instead of trying to learn a new offense? It's definitely, yeah, it's been, it's been great, um, you know, having that year under my belt with, with Coach Jake. And, um, yeah, I mean, I've, I've seen a lot of football, which is good. Um, and so that's, uh, I think that's always been, a, been an advantage for me that I've been through a lot of, a lot of football systems and terminology. And, um, but, yeah, year two with Coach Jake is, is great. It's, um, you know, last year with, with COVID and everything, you know, getting shut down for a little bit, we really were able to, to hammer down on some of the meeting time because um, we weren't able to do as much um, physical for a little while, um, and so that was a big, uh, big, big time for me to to kind of sink in and, and try to learn. And uh, yeah, I'm definitely feeling more confident coming around this year. And two years ago, you were not your fault. The expectations were high coming from Clemson, and now it's kind of flipped. Ryan's coming in as a transfer, who's a highly talented recruit, and you've been here. You're the, you're the older guy. How much does that help that you've kind of seen? Both sides of the quarterback competition. Yeah, I mean, it's you know, at the end of the day, it's it's football, it's competition. Uh, it's what that's what you come to places like Northwestern for. Come to come to compete and um, win championships. And uh, you know, last year we, we fell short again in the Big Ten championship, and that's that's been our focus uh, this off season is to, to get back there and and win. And um, you know, whoever's on the field, uh, that, that's that's what our, our objective is. What are you most confident in terms of fundamental traits in your Um, I think physically I throw a great ball. I uh, always have been able to, to spin a football and um, you know, I think this, this spring I was able to use my feet a little bit more and, and uh, make some plays on the run and um, yeah, I, I, I'm kind of, I'd say those, those two, um, being able to, to make plays on my feet and, and throw accurate, accurate footballs. Hunter, what are your biggest areas of focus on this off season? Where do you see biggest areas to improve and what, do you, what are your biggest goals going forward? Yeah, I think um, you know, the off season. I just really tried to um, get strong, um, get get you know, put some weight on for for the season, and um, mentally just try to fine tune every little thing that I can, and um, 
just prepare myself for, for the season and, and whenever my opportunity comes. And um, yeah, just, just prepare overall. Yeah. And you know, Hunter, this is your fifth year. How are you yeah. using that sense of urgency to motivate you, or how is that impacting you? Um, really, I don't know if there's a, an urgency, uh, you know, that much. It's, um, you know, it's, it's, I'm just focused on the season and um, winning games and, and, and yeah. That's, that's really that's really all I'm focused on. Are you and Ryan uh, roommates? We are. For a while, well, we're we're roommates now. Oh, okay. Yeah. He, oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. How does that go? Uh, you, you you have long talks during the night or? Uh? <laughs> Every once in a while, yeah. No, it's it's funny. It's actually it's it's me, Ryan, and and Sam, Jarek. So, uh, we, we got a we got a good good crew over at my house, and um, yeah, it's been it's been great. We we've enjoyed each other's company and. Uh, yeah, we're good. <laughs> we don't like it. Yeah. There, there's no drama. You and Hunter are roommates, as we just talked about. How much has, he was kind of in your shoes not that long ago. How much has he helped you with that, kind of managing the transition? Yeah, um, Hunter's been great. And the best thing about me and Hunter is that we can joke with each other. And, you know, competition, you might think we're at each other's throats or, you know, we're, we're not talking to each other. But Hunt's a great guy. Um, he's a really good human being. And I know in an interview recently, I told him if I had one teammate to babysit my child, it'd be Hunter. So um, it, he's, he's been great. Um, he's helped me a lot. All the quarterbacks really have. But, but having Hunter as a roommate has been really helpful for sure. What do you guys do in your uh, non-study time? What are the uh, like? <laughs> well, there's not there's not a whole lot of right. time that we get. So like when I, I get home at or we get home at nine uh, or so, you know, we'll be out there writing the script on our whiteboards or um, just talking through any questions that we have about stuff. Um, Sam's out there too, which is great to have that center uh, as smart as he is helping us out. So. We try and do that, um, and then when we have our off days, you know, we'll go back to the crib and, you know, either watch a movie. We watch Love Actually uh, before before <laughs> camp started, um, and that's an ultimate classic, of course. And I sent a picture to my mom and dad, and I mean that that's one of our family favorites. So uh, it, whether it's movies, writing script, talking ball, we do it all. Yeah. Is the romantic comedy genre? <laughs> or is that a big thing for you? <laughs> um, it, usually, of course, with Sam there, you know, Reddit, Star Wars. That that's a Star Wars is a big theme in there, but. Uh, we're usually just trying to find whatever good movie it is, you know, whether it's a classic um, or a new movie, uh, we'll watch it together just to spend that time together and have that camaraderie. Are you expecting to be the starting quarterback Friday night against uh, Richmond? Uh, I'm preparing myself to. I'm preparing every day like, like Hunter, like Marty, um, like all the quarterbacks are doing. Um, that Friday night, you know, it's extra motivation because Tyler's last game that he ever played in college was against Michigan State, um, and he lost. And I know last year these guys lost to Michigan State, and that's motivation. Uh, that's motivation for me, of course. And then, of course, Tyler's last game, losing to them. Um, I want to redeem him, uh, and I'm preparing myself every single day to, to be the starter for this team and to lead those guys Friday night going down to Ryan Field. How do you carry him in your heart every day during practice? How does that, how does that manifest itself mm -hmm. on the field? Well, uh, I carry him physically. I've got this tattoo um, on my wrist. Uh, it's a lighthouse uh, in Hawaii where I spread Tyler's ashes with my family. Um, I've got a tattoo of a three on here on my ribs. Um, so physically, I carry him on my body. Um, and whenever I look at myself in the mirror, when uh, I remember him, you know, I see those those symbols and I remember him. Um, and going onto that field, you know, I say, "All right, Ty, let's rock, let's rock." I've got the Holinsky's Hope Band, and I look down and see three. So. Um, it definitely gives me some extra motivation. Um, I know he's with me every single day. Uh, and in a little bit extra motivation, that lighthouse is on my right arm, so maybe I have a little extra juice, you know, on a couple passes. So it's good to have him with me, no doubt. Are you happy that we're now seeing more and more awareness being brought to mental health issues in sports, especially <coughs> with everything you do with LSD helping your foundation? Yeah, um, it's been... It's been wild uh, to see everything coming up in the mental health world. Um, it's exciting, of course, but not, not exciting for those people that are going through those mental health struggles. Uh, my parents, of course, have been going on phones like crazy, um, doing everything that they can, meeting with people and stuff like that. And I mean, if we hear whatever it is mental health wise in the sports world, we're right on top of it. We talk about it. We try and share with our teammates and such like that. Um, so I'm, I'm happy that it's getting talked about, of course, but it's also just more awareness that's coming to the stigma of mental health and us athletes. Um, and I think that happening is allowing more and more people to speak out. Um, and it's a for, foremost thing that we 
bring forward on our team. You know, we always say, if you're struggling, come forward, talk about it. And I've had teammates that have come up and talked to me about it. And then we work through it and then we come out and practice and they have a tremendous day. So it makes me happy for sure. I think we're seeing major progress now against the stigma. Yeah, I absolutely do. I think the world is going in a better place. Um, and I think the more and more athletes talk about it, uh, the more and more people understand what we go through on a day-to-day -day basis. I mean, we're here from six in the morning till uh, nine at night. And, you know, sometimes guys, whether they're second or third string, uh, it, it affects them mentally sometimes. And we like to talk about it. So I think people are just realizing what we go through on a day-to-day -day basis. Ryan, times of high stress and pressure, what is your personal like mechanism that you turn to mm -hmm. to cope with that and take care of yourself mentally? Yeah, um, I mean, first of all, I think pressure is opportunity. Uh, I think, you know, if you're in a situation where pressure is on you, uh, you have an opportunity to rise to that pressure uh, and bring your best foot forward to that. Um, but of course, with stuff that goes on, whether you go out there, you make an interception, you have a bad day, uh, fumble, whatever it is. Uh, you just got to know that you have guys around you on this team that are also making mistakes, but are also doing their best. Um, and I think the main message of that is everybody's not perfect. We had chapel uh, mass yesterday. It was optional for the team. A bunch of guys went. Um, and the three things that we were supposed to remember was, was we're not God, this ain't heaven, and don't be a jerk. And I think that's the big thing that um, I'm carrying with me through this week and through camp uh, because we aren't God. You know, we're going to make mistakes. And this definitely isn't heaven, but we strive to make sure that it looks like heaven in the best way that we can. And I think the easiest one is don't be a jerk. And that's, that's, that's as simple as it can get. So just don't be a jerk, be a good person. That always helps me when it comes to pressure. When you saw the schedule come out and your, your first, and you noticed Michigan State mm -hmm. as the opener and you know, all the emotions that come with it, what, what was your reaction to that? Uh, of course, I, I want to approach every game um, like, the same, like the same game it is every day. You know, I prepare the same way. Uh, but I remember talking to my dad, um, and he got emotional uh, when it, he found out that the first game was Michigan State because that was the last time. Uh, that we really talked about Tyler and talked to him um, before a vacation that we went on. But uh, it just came as an emotional kind of train at first. Um, but then you got to recollect yourself as a quarterback for this team because quarterbacks can't be like this. You know, we got to be like this for the team, just steady on. So, of course, at first it was emotional uh, for me, but it also led as motivation for the team. I shared it with the guys, um, and they were hyped about it. They were excited. Uh, they said they had got my back and stuff like that. And, of course, last year acts as motivation for them as well, um, and I want to help them do everything that they can to bounce back from that game last year. You know, Ryan, with Polinsky, Toby did a great job spreading that around the South Carolina and mm -hmm. around your community. What are you hoping to do in the Northwestern community and the Chicago just trying to do the same thing, really. You know, just just be an outlet for people, um, bring awareness to our organization and as well to mental health. Um, I know that we did the three fingers at the beginning of the third quarter, um, and then that spread around the SEC, not only for home games, for away games. Um, I don't know if we'll do that here, but if we could do something, you know, that could bring awareness to the organization, I think that would be great. Um, and just sharing it with my teammates, I think, is a big thing for them, too. I've had, I've actually lost, I, I regroup on these bands, like, every day. Because, like, at the end of the day, I've lost all the bands. My arms are bare. So uh, guys are asking for these, which is great. It's good to see that everybody really cares about the organization and, and is caring about their own mental health. So just really trying to do the same thing up here that I did in South Carolina, of course, as a family as well. Ryan, Ryan will be available over here if you need him. Ryan,